Alan Paul, what was Jesus doing between Friday when he died and the first day of the week? What was he doing? <laughs> Woo! Lord have mercy. Alan Paul, there is one day between Friday and Sunday. What day is it? It's Saturday. On that day, Christ was resting in the tomb. Christ obeyed the fourth commandment even at his death. Ha! Oh, Lord have mercy. Woo! Alan Paul, did you know that? Didn't Jesus observe the Sabbath? Okay. Now, some people say, well, Jesus observed the Sabbath, so shouldn't we? Okay, this is a very simple question to answer. We have to understand that the new covenant that Christ brought oh, yeah, yeah. did not render effective until Christ died. Okay. Until Christ died. It wasn't until he was crucified on the cross where he offered his blood as a sacrifice and a propitiation for our sins and took his took our place on the cross for our sins. That is what issued in the new covenant, not his life. It was his death. So while he was alive, yes, he observed the Sabbath because he was still under the old covenant. He was still under the everything that was still under the old covenant until he died on the cross. Now he's issuing in a new covenant, which is why the New Testament writers point to the death of Christ, not the life of Christ. It's the death of Christ that gives us this new freedom that we have. And now the Old Testament law has been nailed to what? Not his manger, not his birthplace, nailed to the cross with all of its requirements. I believe that's Colossians 2 and 16, right? So, uh, yes, Jesus observed the Sabbath, but you can't point to that and say, well, because Jesus observed it, then therefore every Christian must because Jesus was living in the old covenant at that time and the new covenant had not yet been established or instituted. So my friend, there is so much more that I could get into as it relates to this idea of the Sabbath, but I wanted to present to you what I believe the Bible says about the Sabbath, as well as what the Adventists are teaching about this. And I just want to caution you. Okay, guys. All right, so uh, let's actually understand now what Alan Paul is talking about. So he said, um, for my notice, he said that, um, you know what, let me actually do it again because I want to make sure I cut everything as necessarily. Okay. Died. Until Christ died. It wasn't until he was crucified on okay. the cross where he offered his blood as a sacrifice and a propitiation for our sins and took his took our place on the cross for our sins. That is what issued in the new covenant, not his life. Mm -hmm. It was his death. His death. So while okay. he was alive, yes, he observed the Sabbath because he was still under the old covenant. Okay. He was still under the everything that was still under the old covenant until he died on the cross. Now he's issuing in a new covenant, which okay. is why the New Testament writers uh -huh. point to the death of Christ, okay. not the life not of Christ. It's the right. death of Christ that gives us this new freedom that we have. Okay. And now the Old Testament law was has been nailed to, to what? Cross. Not his manger, not okay. his birthplace. Nailed Not to the to cross, the cross. All right. with all of its requirements. I believe that's Colossians <laughs> 2 and 16, oh, right? Man, so, the deception. Uh, yes, Jesus observed the Sabbath, but you can't point oh, to that and say, well, because Jesus observed it, then therefore every Christian must because Jesus was living in the in old the covenant old, yeah. at that okay. time all right. and the new covenant had not yet been established or instituted. All right. Thank you, Alan Paul. Thank you very much for your... Um, knowledge but let me actually explain something to you because you do oh lord have mercy upon this soul hey. guys let me read something to you guys you know as he mentioned ephesians chapter 2 right no colossians chapter 2 
So because now I'm gonna go through from the last one first. Meaning he said that the that when Christ died, that brought the new covenant because the old covenant was nailed to the cross. Let's see what Colossians chapter two. And again, he just picked one verse, didn't give the whole context. Let's see what Colossians chapter two actually says. Let's go to it now. Verse number six. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any of men, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, which I've been saying earlier about, circumcised the foreskin of your heart, Alan Paul. Verse number 13, And you, being dead in your sins, and of the circumcision of the flesh, hath he quickened together with him, hath forgiven you all trespasses. Verse number 14, Blotting out the handwriting, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailed it, to the cross, so so far he is okay. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, here's my question What ordinances? What's going on? Oh, that's why. What ordinances that Jesus Christ nailed to the cross? Well, Alan Paul, let's keep reading. Verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holiday or the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Sabbath days days which are shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ Alan Paul why do you keep reading just one verse why not read the whole thing now guys let me show you what Alan Paul is failing to understand because it's either he is willingly being deceitful or he is naive But, Alan Paul, if you don't change, man, God will let you believe a lie, like he said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the blood of his coming, even him who is coming after the, after the work of Satan. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, verse number 11. And for this, no, verse number, verse number 10. And with all deceitful boldness and of righteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Alan Paul, I need you to examine yourself, my friend. Because you are at war against God's word. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Okay? Let's read. You see how I just showed you that the Sabbath day, right? Guys, Sabbath day. What Alan Paul is failing to understand is there is a difference between the Sabbath day and the Sabbath days. And let's look at this right here in Leviticus chapter 23. 
the feast of the Lord. Guys, let's read this. Do you see? It says, Speak unto the Israelites, saying concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, even as these are my feasts. Now, listen to this. First, to God said the Sabbath. Six days you shall work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. Now, let's look at verse number 4. Bible says, Now, Alan Paul, look, God is trying to help you understand how he separates the Sabbath day with the Sabbath days. The Sabbath days of feast. These were the ordinances that pointed to Jesus Christ. Please do not get that confused. Don't mix the Sabbath day with the Sabbath days. Now, these are the feasts of the Lord. Even a holy convocation. What represented Christ come what represented Christ's death on the cross? It was the Passover. That is the ordinance. The feast of the first fruits. That was Christ's resurrection. The feast of the weeks. Wait, which one was that again? Oh, the okay. We have the feast of the weeks as well. We have um, you see right here? And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, which is the Sabbath day, from that day that you brought the sheep of the weep of rain, seven Sabbaths. That were... No, I'm not, let's keep on reading. You have the feast of the trumpets. That should be considered as a Sabbath. But that happened once. That happened once a year, Alan Paul. Those feasts, the Passover, once a year, that's a Sabbath. The feast of the first fruit, once a year, that's the Sabbath. The feast of the weeks, once a year, that's the Sabbath. The feast of the trumpet, once a year, that's the Sabbath. The day of atonement, once a year, that's the Sabbath. The, the feast of the booth, once a year. All of these were once a year, but the Sabbath day is every week. Alan Paul, you have to be able to distinguish the Sabbath day versus the Sabbath days, my friend. Oh, man. He doesn't understand that. But now, my last argument. Now, he said that, that Jesus brought a new covenant after his death. You know what's interesting, Alan Paul? Um, what's interesting, Alan Paul didn't understand. <laughs> I already read to you guys in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, right? That in chapter 31 of Jeremiah, in verse number 31 through verse number 33, God is already making a new covenant, right? With Jeremiah, I don't know with Jeremiah. Which means, in that case, when Jesus came, Alan Paul, he was already under that new covenant. Let's keep on looking. Now, Alan Paul, would you believe this? I don't know if you knew that, Alan Paul, but I'm going to actually say something to you. You see behind me, Alan Paul? See behind me? Behind me. I have the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. And this one here says the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Now, Alan Paul is saying that when Christ died, that was the New Covenant because it happened at his death, not at the birth. First of all, we saw that 
what was nailed to the cross was not God's Ten Commandments. It wasn't God's Ten Commandments. It was the sacrificial law that were nailed to the cross, not God's moral law. Okay? First thing first, Jesus kept the Sabbath, but he said Jesus never mentioned anything about the Sabbath. Alan Paul, you are being disingenuous. You see right here, Alan Paul, that's where I'm going to get you in the right way. I've been telling you, you are in at war against God's Sabbath. God's word. Guys, did you guys know that Jesus only mentioned the last six? Let's read this for you guys. In the book of Matthew, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew chapter 19. Let's look at this. I'm going to show you guys in all the way that God, Jesus didn't mention anything about the commandment regarding God. He makes it seem as if Jesus mentioned everything but the Sabbath, but he is deceiving you guys. Watch this. Matthew chapter 19. We have the story of the rich young ruler. Rich young ruler, right? Verse number 16. And behold, Matthew chapter 19, one came unto him and said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And said unto him, Why callest me thou good? There is none good but one that is God. But if you if thou wilt enter into life, keep what? The commandments. And he said unto him, Jesus, which one do I keep? Jesus said what? Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, not steal, not bear false witnesses, honor thy father and thy mother, and shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Did Jesus mention anything about not to have any other gods before God? Alain Paul? Alain Paul, did Jesus mention you shall not have any other God before me? No. Does that now mean we can have other gods before God? Because that's your argument. But he said nothing about the Sabbath, so we don't have to keep it. That means I don't have to, I can have other gods before God. I can now worship griffin images. I can take God's name in vain too. Right, Alan Paul? Make it make sense. Let's look at Mark. In Mark, Mark chapter 10, we have the same thing. In Mark chapter 10, we got the same thing. Same thing. Mark chapter 10. You see? Right here, he says what? You know the commandments. Do not come to the tree. Do not kill, steal, bear for witness, defraud not, or the mother and father. Did Jesus mention anything about the anything about not to have any other God before God? Not to worship graven images or take God's name in vain or the Sabbath? Now that means since you say because Jesus didn't mention the Sabbath, then he didn't also mention other gods before God, idol worship, and take God's name in vain. So now we can all worship idols. We can take God's name in vain, and we can also have other gods before God. Luke, same thing in Luke. Luke chapter 19. No, Luke chapter 18. Same thing. We have the same thing in Luke chapter 18. The rich angular came to Jesus Christ, and again, the same thing. What did Jesus say? Jesus did not mention anything about the first four commandments, Alan Paul. It wasn't just the Sabbath. It was, he didn't mention anything about the first four commandments because he, they knew to keep the first four. Their issue was with the last six, Alan Paul. Not the Sabbath, man. <laughs> Not 
on the Sabbath. Now, Alain Paul, here's the best thing that you never thought about. You mentioned that Jesus Christ, at his death, he actually um, brought a new covenant. I already mentioned that that was not a new covenant. Because since Jeremiah, it always said that a new covenant. But did you know, Alan Park, that Jesus, even at his death, he kept the Sabbath? Alan Park, did you know Jesus kept the Sabbath at his death? Guys, Alan Park did not know Jesus kept the Sabbath at his death. He says right here. Behind me, we have in Luke chapter 23, verse number 55, 54. Verse number 54 says, when after Jesus was, when Jesus was buried, before he was buried, Bible says this, verse number 50, oh, all right, verse number 50 to 56. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. And as you can read, he says, This man, verse number 52, went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and said, and put it in a sepulcher. Okay? But what was next? In verse number 54. And that was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. So Jesus died on a Friday which is called preparation for the Sabbath. So on the Friday, he was working for our salvation. On Sunday, on the first day of the week, when he rose from the dead, he was working for our salvation because he had to go up to the Father and present the sacrifice. What, Alan Paul, what was Jesus doing between Friday when he died and the first day of the week. What was he doing? Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Lord have mercy. Alan Paul. There is one day between Friday and Sunday. What day is it? It's Saturday. On that day, Christ was resting in the tomb. Christ obeyed the fourth commandment even at his death. Ha! <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Woo! Alan Paul, did you know that? So while you're trying to make a point that it was that Christ gave a new covenant at his death, not at his birth or at his life, again, God is showing you that Satan has been teaching you that Christ indeed, he truly, in your case, but a new covenant, but you fail to realize that in that new covenant, he also gave us the ordinance or the commandment to keep the Sabbath holy. Why? Because even though you make it seem like it was at his death that at his death that the covenant was made, at his death he kept the Sabbath holy. On Friday he was working, on Sunday he was working. But on Saturday, he was in the tube, sleeping, resting on the Sabbath. <laughs> Woo! Isn't that good, Alan Paul? Isn't that good? Now, let me actually show you something right now. You said that the, old, the New Testament people never mentioned about the Sabbath, right? This right here. That is the that is the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter twenty. Okay, this is the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Let me read it to you. The first commandment says this in Matthew chapter four, verse number ten. Okay, he says, "Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shall thy serve thou serve." That's the first commandment, which is in the Exodus chapter 20. In the New Testament, in the first John chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Little children, 
keep yourselves from idols. And that's equivalent to the second commandment in Exodus chapter 20. Okay? In the third commandment, it says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 1, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. That's the equivalent in chapter 20, verse number, uh, the third commandment in chapter 20 of Exodus. I'm going to skip the fourth one because that's the best one. I'm going to leave it for last. We're going to keep, we're going to look at number 5, 6, or to 8. Number 5, Matthew 19, verse 19, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 2 says, Honor thy father and thy mother. Ma Romans 13, verse 9, Matthew 19, verse 18 says, Thou shalt not kill. Romans 13, verse 9, Matthew 19, verse 18 says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Romans 13, verse 9, Matthew 19, 18 says, Shall not steal. Romans 13, verse 9, Matthew 19, verse 18 says, You shall not bear false witnesses. Romans 7, verse 7, and Romans 13, verse 9 says, Thou shalt not covet. Now, you said that there were no writers in the New Testament that talk about the Sabbath. Let's see what the Sabbath has for us. Hebrews. <laughs> wow. Isn't that your favorite writer, Paul? Right? Alan, is it Paul your favorite writer? Oh, Paul said in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 4, and verse number 9 to 11, said this. For he spake in a certain... Now, this is the fourth commandment. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise, on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. This is Paul giving account of creation when God rested on the seventh day. But Alan Paul, you're saying that no writer talked about the Sabbath to keep it holy, right? Oh, therefore, there remain therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. The same way God rested from his work as creation, we ought to rest in God. How? By keeping the seventh day holy. Let us labor, therefore, let us labor, so there is the work we have to do, Alan Paul. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, let, lest any man fall after the example of the unbelief. Alan Paul, you need to study your word, my friend. Luke 23, verse 54 and 56. And that day was preparation, and the Sabbath drew near, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Wow. Luke chapter 4 verse 16, and, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his countenance was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up there to read. Mark 2, 27-28, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for men. Alan Paul, The Sabbath was made for men, not for the Jews. Or is right? Made for men. And not men for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Chapter 1, Revelation verse 10, I was in the Spirit in the Lord's day, which is the Sabbath. Now, Alan Paul, I just read to you the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Now, let me tell you exactly what's going on. Let me tell you what's going on right now. Um, you see, Alan Power, you are trying to fight against God's Sabbath. I'm going to give you that last thing, that last, um, that last thing I'm going to give you. Okay? 
Watch this. You are fighting against God's Sabbath. Yet, yet, God is giving you multiple chances um, so you can understand it's Sabbath. I'm going to give you that last one. If you've never seen it before, then I hope that can actually help you understand how um, heavy God's Sabbath is. That you should obey it. Just as you go away the rest of the nine, the other nine, you should obey that one too. Listen carefully. This is how sanctified or holy that God's Sabbath is. In God's holy word, it talks about a holy mountain. Do you know what mountain it is? It's called Mount Zion. In God's holy word, you have the holy mountain called Mount Zion. On the holy Mount Zion, Alan Paul, listen carefully, man. Listen carefully. On that holy mountain, God had instituted his holy sanctuary. Well, God said to Moses, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. We have the holy sanctuary, holy temple, holy tabernacle. Inside of that holy tabernacle or holy sanctuary, there is something called the holy place. And beyond the holy place, Alan Paul, there is something called the most holy place. And within that most holy place, I'm just trying to help you understand how holy the Sabbath is. Within that most holy place, we have the holy um, Ark of the Covenant. Or I put holy law. It's the holy Ark of the Covenant. Within that holy Ark of the Covenant, we have the holy law of God. Okay, Alan Paul. And within that holy law of God, there is one commandment, commandment that says what? Holy in it. There is one commandment that says holy. Do you know, Alan Paul, which law that says holy? Again, let's read right here. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Alan Paul, if everything else I have said to you didn't matter, take this for me. God has a holy word. In his holy word, there's a holy mountain. On that holy mountain, there's a holy sanctuary. In that holy sanctuary, there's a holy place. And beyond that holy place, there is a most holy place. Within the most holy place, there is the holy law, holy covenant, ark of the covenant. Okay? And within that ark of the covenant, there is the holy law of God. And within that law of holy law of God, there is only one commandment that says holy. If anything else is not enough for you, I don't know what else God can do. God has sent you people to show you the truth. But if you choose to to be to, to obey the lie, then God will send you strong delusion that you believe the lie because you did not love the truth. I rest my case. Anyone watching, I want you to comment below. What do you think? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts below. Until then. Bye for now.